Welcome back to PageKey Tech. This is the plain text DAW series where we're creating a digital audio workstation from scratch and recording the progress. So we've done some Python and now we are getting into Rust. I wanted to quickly summarize this video because there was a lot of meandering that went on to finding the solution. Basically use the timestamps to find where we actually get to the solution if that's interesting to you. But what we were able to do is figure out state management in Tari. That means that we can store the value of the file path that the user selects in the file picker and use it again later and display it in the GUI. So it's just a proof of concept that we can do this. If you're new here, this is PageKey Tech where we build things from scratch to learn more and to take back tech. So like and subscribe if you're into that kind of content. Okay, so we have a lovely PR by LT Strange. And it's a lot of commits. Some of it's just cleaning up my uh, messy mistakes such as instrument type. But it would seem that the core of this a little further down in raw clip and synth and all throughout here and there's even a pipeline that goes through and it looks like in the song you can just specify a pipeline as a list of transformations to do to the frequency starting with generating the frequency itself and then doing attack decay sustain reverb i'm not sure what the r is but uh yeah pretty cool so i just rendered all three of the example songs that we have here in the repo and i'm going to listen to them Sounds correct. Song two. Sounds good enough. Let's continue. Ooh, wow, that sounds really nice. Compared to before, that sounds amazing. Great. Wow, really nice work, LT Strange. Okay, I don't understand everything you did, but it's awesome. Ton of commits, looks great. I just made one quick change to get PyTest fasting, and now we're good to go. So a couple tweaks and I'm gonna merge it. So thank you, LT Strange, very much. Awesome contribution. Okay, back to where we left off before. We can open a project and go to the test data. Go to a song, open up the song, and we get our new window, the editor window. So the next step is to display the path to the file that we just opened somehow. Let's figure that out. So a little research here has showed me that it is actually incredibly complicated to set a global variable and you probably shouldn't do it anyway so i have no clue what to do so i'm going to hit the rust book again and come back after i'm done a few more episodes in that series so i, I did a few more lessons in the rust book and uh, i feel like i'm getting closer here i was reading about lazy static and how that works and how you can basically like dereference with the star to get to it and uh global mutable variables seems to be tough but uh this answer, if I want to use something in Atari command, how do I do it? He links to this as an example. He says, uh, whoever this person is, says that you can do this. And I got to be honest, this 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 looks like Greek to me. I, option, I don't understand. Mutex, I don't understand any of this stuff. All this is just like, wow, what's even happening here? Mutex seems to be part of the answer or using the lazy static crate, but I'm still not there yet. I'm not sure how this is going to work. So I guess back to the drawing board. Okay, right as I was about to give up, shout out to Mar M. Nakamura for basically just giving me the answer here. State management in Tari using a mutex, just a, a simple app to do counting. Wow, this is really helpful. It looks like we just have to define some kind of struct to hold the data that we want using a mutex. I don't understand the syntax, but I'm gonna try it anyway. And then somehow we're injecting that state. We're locking it, we're changing it, and then it auto unlocks. So I'm gonna try this. I just wanna share that I can't believe this compiled. This is so alien to me, this syntax. So we import mutex, we define this struct, and then down here we say manage file path, the struct, and then default, default, what? <laughs> like I have no idea what that means, but I'm pushing forward, let's keep going. Okay, this seems to have worked. I get the thing, I print it out, I set it to the new thing, I print it out again, and then we open our new window. So it seems to have worked down here. Um, now the true test will be, can we access that in the new window? So let's try to do that. Okay, I have to make the comment. It is insane how quickly this reloads. It's really, I just hit save in any of these files and it instantly reloads on the Rust side, on the JavaScript side. I don't know how they do it. That being said, I added a second JavaScript file for our index two. I made a nicer 
layout here and we just have the editor in the current project and there's a span and I'm dynamically filling that span in JavaScript when it's loaded with hello 2. That's not a dynamic value obviously. So we next is how do we get the Tari state from most likely from here somewhere, but how do we get the Rust state in JavaScript? Do we have to call a Tari command and have it return the value? Maybe. Let me look uh, and see what we can do. Okay, sounds like the way to do it is just define a Tari command that returns the data you need. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, I get how people get tripped up with the borrowing now. I had to clone it. Probably not the best way to do it. Probably wasteful, but I'm doing it. So we return the cloned file path. It's a string. Now let's grab that in the JavaScript side. Okay, wow, it actually works. This is insane. Awesome. So note to self, do not put more than one call to invoke handler because the second one will overwrite the first one. Instead, just make sure if you have more than one command, provide a list, which I had originally, but then I erased it and I forgot. And so we have our path thing here and it says got result down here. It works just fine. Here's what the index looks like. Again, we just have the span and this is what main2.js looks like, right? So instead of having the await stuff, the async method up here, I just call invoke, get file path, and then since it's an asynchronous method, we call then, and in the handler, we get the result that we're expecting, which is that string that Rust re returns to us when the promise resolves, and then we just set the inner HTML. So if we do that, here's what it looks like. We go into test, data, song1, song YAML, current project is this. So this is, wow, that's great. We can now start building up our state based on this YAML file. We can open this baby up, parse it, and then use this exact method that we used for a single string for a rich struct representing everything we need to know about the song. So we've done this in Python and, you know, took a lot longer to get here in Rust, but it's definitely a lot cooler too. It runs faster and yeah, we can start building out our GUI in the future now that we figured out how to manage state. So hope you enjoyed this video. Consider joining the Discord, subscribing, liking, whatever, and we'll see you for the next plain text DAW.